Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, to our ongoing study in the Church Dogmatics by Karl Barth. We're looking at Part 4, the Doctrine of Reconciliation. We are specifically looking at Paragraph 72, the Holy Spirit and the Sending of Community and Mission. And in this lesson, Bart wants to address the task of the mission of the church. So let's begin by looking at Block 1. We're going to look at the task of community. The content of task is the common knowledge of Christ, which is held within the Ecclesia Church. Now, the awakening in the Holy Spirit is the origin of our task of mission, but the content is Christ as he is disclosed to the members of the church. And this is called the revealed name of Christ. It's abbreviated under the revealed name of Christ. And it abbreviates five sub-doctrines. Bart says it abbreviates the true and the living God, the true and the living man, the encounter of Christ with humanity, the historical coexistence of humanity with Christ in his kingdom, and the commencement, the center, and the goal of God's kingdom. Now, on note two, the task as content is enjoined with the task as form. And we've already talked about this, but the form of mission is always signification. The church exists in a form of being the signifying presence that points to God's kingdom. So form always addresses signification. The church is a church pointing in an indication of the kingdom of God. This is the Christian position. Now, Bart is careful to say that Christ is not reduced to sign. It's the church that becomes sign in its likeness to Christ. So it's important to remember that, that Bart never reduces Christ to sign. Bart's fundamental hermeneutical principle is that we always proclaim the personhood of Christ. Christ is the truth in his personhood. But the church does become sign in its likeness to Christ. Metaphorically, this is the church, church existing as John the Baptist pointing to Christ. The church is a signifying church that points to Christ and points to the kingdom of God. So if you look at note three, we've got the, the summation that the task is content, the task is sign, contribute to task as repentance act. Because our attestation to Christ is always actualized as that turn in faith. We're trying to create humanity to take up that turn in faith. Proclamation always includes the stringent call to repentance, but repentance is always abbreviated under the affirmation of grace. Grace is prioritized, but repentance is included. So we never leave out the exhortation toward repentance, but it is subordinated to the affirmation of grace. And that gives us our first inserted triad. We've got uh, the content of task, which is Christ as disclosed and represented by his name. We've got the form of task as always being signification, as a pointing to the kingdom through the church's ministry. And then third, we've got the uh, task of repentance act. Because the church seeks to create the turn in faith, which is the word event that takes place through the proclamation of the word of Christ. And that will take us on to block two. And block two is always the realm of the concrete. So what does this uh, ministry look like in the realm of concrete unification where the church exists as the friends of Christ? Well, first of all, Bart says that the form and the content which we just discussed, becomes confirmed in the concrete realm. There is a confirmation of our attestation that takes place. Christ himself puts into effect our sanctification through vocation. He confirms our task with his parousia advent manifestation of his doxa glory. So confirmation equals the realized goodness of the kingdom in actualization. Christ confirms our ministry in his parousia advent manifestation of his doxa glory. Now in note two, concrete confirmation does empower the church in its turn toward humanity, 
in interest and value. And that's key for BART. Before you begin your ministry, there's the, uh, the soteriological turn. There's the turn toward humanity because the church is what? Ecclesia. The church is the church of the called out ones, called out of the world. But in our mission, we are called out of the world, but then we turn toward the world in mission. So this turn is essential. So we have the uh, turn toward humanity in interest. We are called out of the world, which leads to our task of turning toward the world in that ministry of attestation. Humanity should be considered as ennobled through God's grace. Therefore, it's the ennobling turn of grace in Christ toward the world. It's an ennobling turn of grace toward all of humanity in Christ. And that gives us our summary statement in three Concrete confirmation and the ethical value in our turn both create an empowered Ecclesia Church in three modalities, readiness, concentration, and inquiry. So discharging of task is a threefold modality. There is the theoretical signifying readiness of the church. There's the practical concentration of phronesis in the church. There's the return of inquiry and self-critique that takes place in that return moment of the church's ministry. And Bart says that discharged task is never abstract truth. It is always concrete as praxis. It is always concrete as proclaiming the personhood of Christ as the truth. Additionally, in C, he says, discharged task must constantly guard itself against straying off the definite line of the gospel. The church needs to adhere to the definite line of the gospel, which is the one way, the one truth, the one life through the personhood of Jesus Christ as the life and the truth. That gives us our second inserted triad in the realm of the concrete. We have confirmation of our form and our content through the advent of doxa glory. We have the ethical turn toward humanity in attestation by positing the nobility of humanity and the grace in Christ. That makes the church an empowered church in its sign readiness and, its, and in its practical ministry. A church in sign readiness and practical ministry. And that will take us on to block three. So in block three, we want to take a look at uh, the concept of address or exhortation. It's the question of those who are addressed in the task of the ministry of the church. Who is addressed? And he begins by saying that the kerygma, proclamation of Christ, is an exhortation of an address to humanity. It is an awakening to joy. It is a disclosing of profound gnosis truth. But it's always in the form of an address, an exhortation for a turn in faith. It's always an address and an exhortation for humanity to turn in faith. But it's always to be radiant and cheerful in its manner because it is always aligned with the joy of the kingdom. Now, in note two, who is addressed? Man is the addressee. As man known by God himself, as man articulated in the word of God, it is the creating of a process of the self-understanding of humanity, which begins with the disturbance and that uh, shocking disturbance of humanity first receiving the gospel. There's that being sh uh, shaken up. They're, they're disturbed like we were in our conversion prior to our turn in faith. You have that disturbance of the word of Christ in encounter. Now, Bart says that man is addressed in his two-part specific nature. The word of Christ confronts man in his cosmic and cultural situation, and the word of Christ confronts the linguistic expressive environment that man exists in also. And we have a very secular, atheistic language that humanity exists in today. 
So we address that man within that linguistic culture. And then from there, let's take a look at uh, note three. Kerygma as address and man as the addressee create the act of illuminating grace by the church. The church in attestation creates illumination. The first illumination is the uh, illumination of the vacuum of true meaning that is in desperate existential need and soteriological need of filling. The second illumination is the illumination of the impotence of humanity in being able to rectify their own life under their own self-determining power. And the third illumination is the word of Christ as awakening knowledge, pardoning word, and eschatological kingdom. It's the illumination of the awakening knowledge, the pardoning word, and the eschatology of kingdom. That gives us our final inserted triad of kerygma as address, man as the addressee, and the act of illuminating grace as the word of Christ proclaimed by the empowered church. So we have absolutely profound teaching on what in systematic theology is called missiology. That's the technical theological title, a doctrine of missiology. But uh, Bart calls it the task of mission. So he gives it a very concrete title, the doctrine of the task of mission. And it involves a proclamation of grace that includes the proclamation of the need for repentance. That leads to an empowerment through uh, the confirmation that we receive in our mission of Christ in his parousia advent, which empowers us with his doxa glory presence. That empowers the church. So as a church that proclaims grace and repentance, and as an empowered church, we become the church that uh, proclaims the gospel to create the threefold act of illuminating the illumination of awakening knowledge, the illumination of the pardon of atonement in Christ, the illumination of the eschatology of the kingdom of God, within which all of humanity has been unified in a henosis unification through the one and once for all atonement in Jesus Christ. So it's just about the best presentation of missiology that I've ever seen. I think it's very powerful. I think Professor Bart was especially enabled and empowered by the Holy Spirit to write the church dogmatics, period. But this volume, 29 in the study edition, is very powerful. I say that about every volume, don't I? But uh, this volume 29 in the study edition, which addresses... Uh, the Holy Spirit and mission is so powerful and so important to Bart because Bart always emphasizes the concrete. He always emphasizes the person of Christ and doctrine is always concrete, never abstract. So to deal with missiology in this concrete manner is very true to Bart's hermeneutic and it's extremely powerful for us to take in and to uh, internalize so that it can qualify our convictions, so it can qualify our soul, so it can qualify our spirit and our understanding of God's kingdom. We've been graciously endowed with this teaching by Professor Bart that takes up a proclamation of grace and repentance, empowerment through parousia advent of Christ's glory as a, he who coexists in our mission and then that uh, powerful work that every time we proclaim the word of Christ, illumination takes place through the Holy Spirit. Illumination always takes place as that awakening knowledge, that pardoning word of atonement, and that affirmation that you now live in an eschatology of God's kingdom that is present in the world, though concealed, it can be unveiled through spiritual vision and spiritual hearing, but the kingdom of God is eschatologically present in the world today. That's going to wrap up this lesson on the doctrine of the task of 
the mission of the church. Next time we will pick up at page 129.